following contains clips from Disney's Frozen and Frozen 2. Now available on Blu-ray and DVD. Anna, Elsa. Bedtime soon. Uh-oh, the princess is trapped in the Snow Goblin's evil spell. Quick, Elsa, make a prince, a fancy one. Oh no, the prince is trapped too. Who cares about danger when there's love? Ugh, Anna, ugh. Kissing won't save the forest. <laughs> the lost fairies cry out. <laughs> what sound does a giraffe make? Mm -hmm. Never mind, they wake the fairy queen, who breaks the spell and saves everyone. And they all get married. <laughs> Elsa, psst. Elsa! Uh, wake up, uh, wake up, wake up! Anna, go back to sleep. I just can't. <sighs> the sky's awake. So I'm awake. So we have to play. Go play by yourself. Uh, uh. <gasps> Do you want to build a snowman? Come on, come on, come on, come, come on! This is getting out of hand. It was an accident. I'm sorry, Anna. She's ice cold. I know where we have to go. <clears throat> Your Majesty, the gloves. From Furir Utir, Queen Elsa of Arendelle. May I talk to you, please? Alone? No. Whatever you have to say, you, you can say to both of us. Fine. You can't marry a man you just met. You can if it's true love. Anna, what do you know about true love? Well, more than you. All you know is how to shut people out. You asked for my blessing, but my answer is no. Now, excuse me. Your Majesty, if I may ease no, your- No, you may not, and I, I think you should go. The party is over. Close the gates. Yes, what? Your Majesty. Elsa, no, no, wait. <gasps> Give me my glove. Elsa, please, please. I can't live like this anymore. Then leave. What did I ever do to you? Enough, Anna. No, why? Why do you shut me out? Why, why do you shut the world out? What are you so afraid of? I said enough! <laughs> Sorcery. I knew there was something dubious going on here. Elsa. Uh. Yes, it is her. 
Queen Elsie. Uh, Our beautiful Queen. Your Majesty, are you all right? From me. Stay away! Oh. Monster! Monster! Elsa! You can't run from this! Just take care of my sister! Your sister? She returned from the mountain weak and cold! She said that you froze her heart! I tried to save her, but it was too late. Her skin was ice, her hair turned white. Your sister is dead because of you. yourself for me? I love you. Why is there a ship here? How is it here? It must have been washed in from the dark sea. What were they doing in the dark sea? I don't know. How did the ship get through the mist? I thought nobody could but us. Unless nobody was on it. There's gotta be something here. Wait, wait, look around. Every Arendellian ship has a, a compartment, waterproof. That's very clever. Although it does make me wonder why they don't just make the whole ship waterproof. <laughs> Here. What language is this? I don't know. But look, this is Mother's handwriting. The end of the Ice Age, the river found but lost. Magic's source. Elsa's source? It's a map. They traveled north and planned to cross the Dark Sea to Otto Hallen. It's real? Otto who what? Otto Hallen. It's a magical river said to hold all the answers about the past. Reinforcing my water has memory theory. Mm. Water has memory. Elsa? 
I want to know what happened to them. about me you are not responsible for their choices Elsa no just their deaths stop no Yelena asked why would the spirits reward Arendelle with a magical queen because our mother saved our father she saved her enemy her good deed was rewarded with you you are a gift for what if anyone can resolve the past, if anyone can save Arendelle and free this forest, it's you. I believe in you, Elsa, more than anyone or anything. Honey Marin said there was a fifth spirit, a bridge between the magic of nature and us. A fifth spirit? That's who's been calling me, from Otta Holland. The answers about the past are all there. So we go to Otta Hallen. Not we. Me. What? The Dark Sea is too dangerous for us both. No, no, we do this together. Remember the song? Go too far and you'll be drowned. Who will stop you from going too far? You said you believed in me that this is what I was born to do. And I don't want to stop you from that. I. I don't want to stop you from being whatever you need to be. I just don't want you dying, trying to be everything for everyone else, too. Don't do this alone. Let me help you, please. I can't lose you, Elsa. I can't lose you either, Anna. Come on. Mm. Wait, what? What are you doing? Elsa! deserves to stand with you. Me? 
you did what was right for everyone. Did you find the fifth spirit? You are the fifth spirit. You are the bridge. Well, actually, a bridge has two sides. And Mother had two daughters. We did this together. And we'll continue to do this together. Together. Elsa! You're okay! <sighs> you look different. Did you cut your hair or something? <laughs> or something. Oh. Hmm. Anna, I need to ask you a question. Okay. Do you want to build a snowman? What? I presume we're done. Or is this putting us in mortal danger situation gonna be a regular thing? <laughs> no, we're done. Destroy the dam! Come on! Throw your boulders! That's it. deserves to stand with you. Me? You did what was right for everyone. Did you find the fifth spirit? You are the fifth spirit. You are the bridge. Well, actually, a bridge has two sides. And Mother had two daughters. We did this together. And we'll continue to do this together. Together.
Oh, hello. I didn't see you there, but I'm glad you're here. I don't know about you, but I love reading books. Let's get into a good book right now. Welcome to the Frozen Friends Club. I'm Scarlett, and today I'll be reading Snow and Chell from Disney's Frozen Five Minute Stories. Disney Frozen Snow and Tell. It had been a few months since Olaf had helped Anna and Elsa end the eternal winter in Arendelle, and as one of the kingdom's newest residents, he wasted no time in exploring his home. Olaf loved seeing new sights, hearing new sounds, and smelling new smells. One day, Olaf happened upon a group of children. A parade! He squealed. I love parades. Hi, Olaf. A girl named Lisbeth said. What are you doing today? Just wandering around town. Olaf replied. You mean wandering? She said. No, wandering. I'm wondering why you are parading inside when it's so nice out. <laughs> it's not a parade. Lisbeth giggled. It's school. Then she followed her classmates into the building. Olaf was curious. He'd never been to a place called school before. Peering through the window, Olaf saw Lisbeth. She was in front of the class, sharing her collection of seashells. They were different shapes, sizes, and colors. My shells are special to me because my papa is a fisherman. He sails a boat to many different places, and he always brings shells back to me from his trips. Then the teacher, Miss Halverson, welcomed Olaf inside. Would you care to join us? She asked. Really? Could I? Olaf asked. We're having show and tell, said Lisbeth. Ooh! Gasped Olaf. I love show and tell. That's my favorite. What is it? Miss Halverson explained that the students were sharing their collections, groups of items that had special meaning for them. It was Finn's turn next. He poured smooth, shiny marbles into his hand for the class to see. Olaf noticed that collections could be made up of all sorts of things, like marbles, rocks, figurines, or even fish. Olaf loved hearing about all the different collections the children had brought in. Suddenly, he raised his hand. Miss Halverson, can I share my collection too? Olaf asked. I think you mean, may I share my collection? Miss Halverson said. Of course, Olaf said. She smiled. Go ahead, Olaf. It's your turn. Hi, I'm Olaf. He said, and I like warm hugs. I collect them from everyone I meet. Miss Halverson smiled again. Olaf, collections are usually made of things you can touch. Olaf's eyes lit up, and he nodded with excitement. First, Olaf pulled off his carrot nose. Then he reached up and took a handful of snow from his flurry. Next, he pulled out an icicle with the tip broken off from behind his back. It was certainly an unusual collection. He placed each item on Miss Halverson's desk. Olaf, Miss Halverson began. I don't think you understand. Items in a collection have value or meaning. Yes, they're unique. Right. They're special in some way. Gotcha. Miss Halverson looked at all the items on her desk. Usually, we collect things that aren't just parts of our bodies. But Olaf pointed out that his carrot nose was not just part of his body. It was the first gift he'd ever received. This carrot reminds me of the day I met my friends Anna and Sven. Olaf explained, when Anna gave me the carrot to use as my nose, Sven was so cute. He kept trying to kiss it. So whenever I see it, it makes me smile. One of the children raised her hand. What's special about snow? Olaf pointed to the small cloud over his head. This is my own personal flurry. My friend Elsa gave this to me. He said, "She said snowman didn't last long in the summer sun. Now, wherever I go, I think of her friendship." Miss Halverson began to understand. And the icicle? Olaf held it to his eye. I used this to watch for my friend Kristoff when he returned to the castle to save Anna. He explained, "It reminds me of what true love looks like." When Olaf had finished sharing, he looked at Miss Halverson. "Miss Halverson, your eyes melting," he said. 
With a smile, Miss Halverson wiped away a small tear. Then, the entire class cheered as they came up to hug the little snowman. Olaf was thrilled. His collection of hugs had just grown a lot. I hope you enjoyed the story time. I know, I loved it. I can't wait to see you again right here for our next story with the Frozen Friends Club, where the fun is always frozen. Bye! Kristoff! Anna! yourself for me? I love you. An act of true love will thaw a frozen heart. Love will thaw. Love. Of course. Elsa? Love! snow so I can go sledding? Of course, Olaf. Whee! Hey, Alexander, I'm getting an orange. Do you want a snack too? Yeah. Can you get me my apple, please? Sure. Oh no! Alexander, come here quick! What's wrong? Look, I think the cooler got a little too cold. Oh, yeah. I stuck those in the freezer last night so they'd be extra cold today. I guess it froze them too well. Well, we're going to have to get it out of the ice if we want our snack. And how are we going to do that? Good question. I have an idea. So, Alexander and I found a few things that could possibly help us melt this big ice cube with our snacks inside. The only problem is, we need to figure out which one works the quickest because Alexander and I are starting to get hungry. How does ice melt? Well, ice is water in a frozen state. When water is a liquid, it means that the molecules are warm and are moving around, which makes it a liquid. That is, until it reaches its freezing temperature, or the temperature at which the molecules cool and slow down enough to make structures that turn into ice. I'm ready to turn ice back into water. How about we use the mittens? If we can warm Anna and Kristoff's hand, then we can warm our ice cube. Then it could possibly melt it. Oh yeah, that's a great idea. Come on, let's do it. Ooh, I feel my hands getting warm already. I'm ready to melt the ice. Come on, let's do this. Yeah. Okay, let's warm you up, little guy. By rubbing it, we're creating friction. I hope this warms up the molecules faster. Yep. Rub it up, dub. How are you doing? Good. It's not melting very well. Is yours melting? Not really. 
I guess the friction we're causing with our hands isn't quite enough to melt it fast enough. Maybe we should try something else. Yeah, it's not warming it like we thought it would. Which one should we choose now? The spray bottle. Since the water in here is room temperature, it's warmer than the actual water inside the ice cube, so it should possibly melt it. Good idea. Let's, Let's try, try it. it out. Woohoo! Is yours melting? No, not really. Is yours? Uh, not that well. There has to be a quicker way. How about the spoons? We can be like Kristoff and carve out our snacks from the ice. Then we can eat our snacks. That might work. Come on, let's try it. Kristoff's job is so much fun. I know. Well, it's not working that well because we don't have the tools that Kristoff's using. If we could finish this, it's probably going to take a really, really, really long time. That's a lot of reallys, and that's true. This is definitely not gonna work. All we have left is salt. How is salt supposed to work? We all know that water has a freezing point, or the point where it changes from a liquid to a solid. Salt lowers the freezing point of the water. So if we sprinkle it over the ice cube, it would turn from a solid to a liquid really quickly. Come on, let's try it. Yes. Let's make sure it really gets in there. It's actually kind of working. Yeah, it's starting to melt. Whoa, that looks really cool. We might finally get to eat our snacks. Let's work on the bottom parts here. Whoa, a whole big chunk fell off. Look at that. Wait, mine's finally out. Look, Alex. We did it. We're finally done. Whoa. a long time, but it was the quickest out of all the options. Yep, the salt really did its job. <laughs> yes, finally we get to eat it. I never would have guessed that salt was such a quick way to melt ice. Actually, now that I think about it, it makes sense why they put salt on roads when it snows and gets super icy. It helps melt the ice and keep roads safe. So Olaf should probably avoid salty foods, huh? We wouldn't want him to melt. Right, although Elsa could always refreeze him. <laughs> That's true. And now we finally get to eat our snacks. Yay! Come on. Oh. I guess it's still too cold. <laughs> we need Elsa to thaw them now. <laughs> <laughs>
Ben! Where'd you guys go? We totally lost Marshmallow back there. <laughs> We were just talking about you. All good things, all good things. No! This is not making much of a difference, is it? Hang in there, guys! Go, go faster. Wait, what? Bunch of important things happened that I forgot, but all that matters is I was right and water has memory, and thus <gasps> I live. And so do you. Oh, we live! We live! <laughs> Good story! <laughs> I'm super excited to show you how I discover nature with my family. One thing that I love about nature is there's so much magic to take in. Everywhere you turn, you can find something new. What I love most about nature is I don't have to go far to learn, create, or explore since nature is all around us. That's why I wanted to create an enchanted terrarium. An enchanted terrarium is a small garden with pebbles, plants, lots of decorations, and rocks. Today, I'm going on a magical adventure with my family right in our backyard. I get to discover what makes nature so exciting and special, just like my favorite Walt Disney Animation Studio characters, Queen Elsa. I cannot wait to show you what I create. My backyard is full of cool stuff, like a bamboo tree, a water fountain, and a really cool flower bush. What really makes my backyard so special is that it has a big maple tree, which kind of makes me feel like I'm in an enchanted forest. I love to explore nature and create new things, so I decided to build a terrarium myself. It was so much fun. But before making it, I had to ask my mom if it was okay. She said she'd help me. So we headed to our backyard and started our adventure. First, me and my mom dug up some dirt and put it into a bucket so we could bring it inside for later. Then, we started looking all around our backyard for rocks. The more rocks we found, the more excited I got about what was to come. And that's when something magical happened. We found rocks that looked like enchanted gems. We also found one that had a funny shape. So I told my mom that that reminded me of the earth giants and that we had to grab as many as we could. Once we found all the rocks we needed, we started looking for the sticks and other small pebbles around my backyard. But I knew we couldn't do it alone. We had to find lots and lots of materials. So we were going to need some extra help. That's when I called over my little sisters to help us make the perfect terrarium. It was so much fun getting to help my little sisters find what they needed. I even started to feel like Elsa, who went with her sister on a peek and picture too. So if you're a big sibling, you could be a leader for your little brothers or sisters, just like Elsa and me. This way, they don't have to miss out on all the fun adventures. My sisters found these beautiful, colorful leaves and some cool sticks to add to our collection. Then we looked around for a little bit longer and spotted some grass. 
So we worked up together to gather it all up. Before we knew it, we had tons of materials in our hands. We all had so much fun and work to do. Okay, so JD, do you remember in Frozen 2, they talk about the four elements? Yeah. Do you know what the four elements are? Yeah, um, fire, mm -hmm. water, earth, and wind. Good job! So what here in the terrarium represents earth? Um, the rocks in my terrarium. What here represents fire? Um, these sticks poking out from the ground. And how about wind? That's a tricky one. Yeah, I actually use these petals representing wind because petals are really light, so they're easy to move in the wind. Okay, awesome. I think we have all of our materials. Now that we had everything we needed, it was time for us to head inside and make our enchanted terrariums come to life. Mom grabbed us some glass containers so we could start adding all the materials we gathered outside. Now it's time to get ready for web and wing for all day, building my enchanted terrarium. First, I grabbed the awesome rocks me and my mom found outside and placed them into the bottom of my jar. Then, mom helped me put the dirt inside so it wouldn't get everywhere. Then it was time to add my flower petals, sticks, and leaves to really give my terrarium that magic touch. While I was adding the rest of my materials, mom and I noticed that we were missing one of the four elements, water. So we added just a little bit of water so my jar wouldn't get too muddy. I was so, so happy because now my terrarium was starting to look like a moment from Frozen. But we weren't just done yet. My mom surprised me with an extra special gift. I couldn't believe it. She gave me these teeny little Frozen dolls for me to place in my terrarium. You could really feel the magic now. Now that Mom and I have created the perfect terrarium, it was time to help my sisters create theirs too. And this is what they made. Once me and my sisters had the perfect enchanted terrariums, all that was left to do was to let nature take over. If you and your family want to try this at home, you can use whatever natural materials you find outdoors. You could even use seashells from beaches, rocks, or even leaves you could collect on walks. I hope that you had as much fun as I did today building my enchanted terrarium with my mom and sisters. Don't forget that nature's all around you and yours to discover. Goodbye! The following contains clips from Disney's Frozen 2, now available on Blu-ray and DVD. Water, Earth. this controlling what you can when things feel out of control okay i don't understand you've been hearing a voice and you didn't think to tell me i didn't want to worry you we made a promise not to shut each other out just tell me what's going on i woke the magical spirits of the enchanted forest okay that's definitely not what i thought you were going to say wait the enchanted forest the one father warned us about yes why would you do that? Because of the voice. I know it sounds crazy, but I believe whoever is calling me is good. How can you say that? Look at our kingdom. I know. It's just that my magic can feel it. I can feel it. He's so cute! Watch this. Ta-da! Whoa! You made Olaf just like in the movie. Hi everyone, I'm Olaf. Hi there, welcome to Frozen. Discover your nature where we create, explore, and learn. I'm Malia, 
And it's winter! No, Sven. I didn't get your carrots. Winter is a time of hibernation for many plants and animals. But there's always beautiful things to see in nature during this season, like snow. So in today's video, to celebrate the winter season, we'll be doing everyone's favorite winter activity. Can you guess what it is? I'll give you a hint. It involves snow. Building snow! Morgan, you scared me. I'm sorry, Malia. I got a little too <laughs> excited there. Hi, everybody. I'm Morgan. To celebrate the winter season, we'll be building Olaf. Well, not Olaf, Olaf, because we don't have magical powers like Elsa. We'll be building snowmen. You know, winter is my favorite season. I love that it's cold. I could put on a soft sweater, hat, and scarf. Or snuggle up in a warm blanket during the season. Ooh, I need to add some hot chocolate to that. Whenever I think about winter, I remember when the Frozen crew were all hanging out together, playing by the fireplace. Uh, monster. Brown bear. Mm. Angry face. Black bear. Uh, Hans. <laughs> that scene reminds me of what winter is all about. Celebrating and having fun with family and friends. Indeed. And the season is also about snow. And building snowman is a winter tradition. But of course it doesn't snow everywhere in the world. So building a traditional snowman isn't always possible. Which is where Morgan and I come in. We'll be showing you how to make homemade snow so that we can all make our own unique snowmen. To make homemade snow, all you'll need is conditioner and baking soda. And of course, a little help from a parent or guardian. Now that we can all make snowmen this winter, let's get to it. First, you'll need baking soda. Do one scoop and then pour it in. Then you want to grab your hair conditioner. And then mix. Add more hair conditioner if needed. Making snow reminds me of Frozen. Remember when Kristoff was getting all that ice? This feels so cool. Yeah, it looks just like snow. I can barely tell the difference. I know, right? We just have to make sure not to eat this, because this isn't ice. Yellow and snow? No go. <laughs> Well, Malia and I are going to step away for a bit, and when we come back, we have a little surprise for you. <laughs> so, Morgan, I mean Elsa, do you want to build a snowman? Let's do this with our gloves on. That's a good idea. First, I'm gonna start off with his bottom half. Me too. He's gonna be pretty small. Hey, Malia, do you know how real snow is made? No, I don't. How is it made? Well, real snow develops when water vapor freezes and falls to the ground. Oh, that's <laughs> so cool. No, no, yes, no. Are you all right? No. And now I'm gonna do his upper half. Now, I'm gonna start adding some accessories to this oh. to make it look like a real snowman. He's so cute! Watch this. Ta-da! Whoa! You made Olaf just like in the movie. Hi, everyone. I'm Olaf. Well, not Olaf, but a pretty good snowman. <laughs> this was really fun! Yeah, it was. <laughs> We did a great job. <laughs> yeah, I love it so much. Here comes Elsa. Here comes Anna. Last but not least, Olaf. Yeah. I covered mine in snow so that it stings and it looks like it's growing out of the snow. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> this was really fun, Morgan. First, we made our snow. Then we built our snow men. <laughs> I think Elsa would be very proud of how we made the most of the environment we're in. 
Wait. I mean, I'm Elsa. <laughs> Great job, me. <laughs> I actually have a surprise for you, Morgan. Dad! <laughs> I love this. You're the best. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, that's all the time we have today. Thank you so much for celebrating the winter season and building snowmen with us. We're about to embark on a new cozy adventure. And don't forget, nature is yours to discover. I'm Malia. And I'm Morgan. Until next time. Bye. Bye. Following contains clips from Disney's Frozen, now available on Blu-ray and DVD. Queen Elsa of Arendelle. Princess Anna of Arendelle. Are you sure? Because I don't think I'm supposed to... Oh, okay. <clears throat> hi. Hi, hi me? Oh, um, hi. You look beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> you look beautifuler. I mean, not fuller. You don't look fuller, but more, more beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. So... This is what a party looks like. It's warmer than I thought. And what is that amazing smell? Chocolate. <laughs> Your Majesty, the Duke of Weaseltown. Weaseltown. Duke of Weaseltown. Your Majesty. Has your closest partner in trade? It seems only fitting that I offer you your first dance as queen. Jump. Uh, thank you. Only I don't dance. Oh. But my sister does. <laughs> oh. What? Lucky you. Oh, I don't think... <laughs> if you swoon, let me know. I'll catch you. Sorry. Like an agile peacock. <laughs> Ow. Ow. Speaking of, so great to have the gates open. Why did they shut them in the first place? Do you know the reason? Hmm? No. No. All right. Hang on! They don't call me the Little Dipper for nothing! <laughs> like a chicken with the face of a monkey! I fly! Let me know when you're ready for another round, lady. <laughs> well, he was sprightly. Ah, especially for a man in heels. <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> I've never been better. This is so nice. I wish it could be like this all the time. Me too. Okay, three, two, two one. one. Hi everyone and happy Easter. I'm Dylan. And I'm Leah and welcome to the Frozen Friends Club. Leah and I were just talking about how every year at least one to two Easter eggs that we color ends up breaking during our Easter egg hunts. When the show breaks, it ruins the core designs we make. See, if Elsa was here, she could just make a nice soft pile of snow appear underneath it and it wouldn't break. Yeah, well, Elsa isn't here, and neither of us have ice powers. Yeah, so we had an idea. We've been learning a lot about the force of motion in our science classes. When an egg falls, the egg falls because of gravity, and it keeps falling until something, aka the ground, stops it. The egg is moving really fast when it hits the ground, and the force is big, so it causes the shell to break. We've also learned that there are several ways to reduce that force when the egg hits the ground. You can either have something to help absorb the shock of the egg, or you can have something to help slow the egg down. So the force of impact isn't as great. So today, we're going to put what we know to the test and use our creativity to create devices <laughs> to see if we can keep our Easter eggs from breaking. Then we're gonna actually test them out and see whose egg saving device works the best. It's going to be mine. 
We'll see about that. Okay, are you ready? Yes, I'm so Let's ready. Do Let's it. go. So our parents helped us gather some arts and crafts items to use for our egg saving devices. So some of the supplies here are balloons, markers, toilet paper rolls, popsicle sticks, straws. Oh, and don't forget the safety scissors. Always use safety scissors, and if you ever need help, ask a parent or guardian. And we're gonna be using hard boiled eggs today, so we don't make a big mess. So you wanna get to it? Awesome, okay. Three, two, two one, one, go. Could you hand me the blue scissors? Yeah. Thank you. Do you want the silver stars? Uh, not yet. I'm gonna start by, I think, wrapping the egg in felt. What about you? So what I've done here is I've cut out this. Mm -hmm. So like I can put straws in it. So what I'm gonna do is cut these in half and you know, put these in the middle so they fit and the egg doesn't fall out. What are you gonna kinda do? I'm gonna do a parachute. So parachute, I attach it to this. The strings will support the parachute. Okay. And when I drop it, it should slow it down. So before I put my top straws in, I'm gonna see if my hard boiled egg will fit. Do you think this will cushion it? Oh like, wow, it yeah, won't move it definitely either. looks really sturdy yeah, in there. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I'm gonna attach this, I'm gonna put strings in. Awesome. And attach it to the, to this. Yours is looking really good Thank so you, far. yours too. Thanks. <laughs> I want it to cushion and support the egg. I'm thinking of a triangle kind of shape, yeah. So the main idea for mine is to just cushion the egg as much as possible. Just like snow can cushion a fall, like if Anna fell into the snow, then she would be okay, maybe a little cold. So the felt and the straws are gonna cushion it just like the snow would. So this is the parachute I built. Hopefully when I drop it, the air will catch onto the fabric and slow it down, just like a parachute would. But at least it is catching, so. That is good. Thank you. I'm just gonna finish using some string and then I'll be done. We're done. Nice. So mine, I put a lot of string to reinforce and like keep the two separate triangles together. And you can see the egg is in here. And the one that goes straight down the middle is to help support and keep the egg inside and steady. So I really hope that it'll help support the fall and the egg won't break. So what I have here is a parachute attached to the straws so that the parachute is actually holding in place so the air actually can go under. And then here I have tape to help cushion it and then decorations. And then I have these landing pads. So when it lands, it helps stabilize it just like a helicopter would. All right, are you ready to test these out? I sure am. Let's go try it. Let's go. <laughs> I'm so excited to test these out. Okay. Hopefully they don't break. I know. Okay. Go first. All right, let's see. Coming up. Okay, three, two, two one. one. Go. <laughs> okay, did it break? Your turn. Yeah, I'll go next. Wait to see. Three, two, one. Whoa. Whoa, hopefully that was not the egg. Okay. But let's check it out. You go first. Me? Yeah. Okay. I hope it didn't break. I know. Let's just do this. I'm excited. I'm gonna set this down real quick. Time to unravel the fabric. It's oh. safe! Yeah. It didn't break! Can I see? Yeah. Wow. The paint came off a little yeah. bit. <laughs> But no cracks. Yes, yeah. it didn't break. I know it cushioned it, so when yeah. it bounced around, it, the egg wouldn't absorb it anything. It did. Okay, let's see yours. Okay. Here, do you see? want me to hold the straws? Oh, uh, thank you. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Here, oh, he oh, cracked no, on the bottom. It oh no! It might have <laughs> needed a little more cushion. Yeah, I agree. So if we dropped it higher, the force of impact wouldn't be as great because the yeah. parachute would have more time to collect air and yeah. stuff. So now I know what to do next time is to drop it higher and add more cushioning. Yeah. You did a really good job on yours. Thanks, yours too. <laughs> At least I know how to keep my Easter eggs safe this year. But if they're all in our egg saving devices, we won't be able to see the cool designs we put on them. But they'll be safe. <laughs> we hope you learned something, we sure did. And remember, nature is yours to discover. Until next time, bye! bye. The following contains clips from Disney's Frozen 2, now available on Blu-ray and DVD. What? How can it be? Why 
What is it? Mother and father's ship. But this isn't the Southern Sea. No, it isn't. been washed in from the dark sea what were they doing in the dark sea i don't know how did the ship get through the mist i thought nobody could but us unless nobody was on it there's got to be something here wait wait look around every arendellian ship has a, a compartment waterproof that's very clever. Although it does make me wonder why they don't just make the whole ship waterproof. Here! What language is this? I don't know. But look, this is Mother's handwriting. The end of the Ice Age, the river found but lost. Magic source. Elsa's source? It's a map. They traveled north and planned to cross the Dark Sea to Otto Hallen. It's real? Otto who what? Otto Hallen. It's a magical river said to hold all the answers about the past. Reinforcing my water has memory theory. Mm. Water has memory. Elsa? I want to know what happened to them. about me you are not responsible for their choices Elsa no just their deaths stop no Yelena asked why would the spirits reward Arendelle with a magical queen because our mother saved our father she saved her enemy her good deed was rewarded with you you are a gift for what if anyone can resolve the past, if anyone can save Arendelle and free this forest, it's you. I believe in you, Elsa, more than anyone or anything. <laughs> 